Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we are revisiting Intel's Arc A770 with an updated benchmark using the latest available driver. And this is a test many of you have been requesting ever since Intel made some pretty big claims earlier this month about improved performance. In short, Intel claimed their new 4091 driver improved DirectX 9 performance on average by 43% with individual gains as high as 87%. So some pretty mega performance claims there. Today's video is sponsored by LG and their brand new 27 inch Ultra Gear OLED gaming monitor, the 27GR95QE. This display is the perfect choice for high refresh rate HDR gaming, it has a blazing fast 240Hz refresh, which combined with elite response times gives you super clear motion, among the best we've ever tested. Plus you get a stunning HDR experience thanks to OLED's per pixel local dimming and deep zero blacks, giving you that punchy, vibrant, dazzling image quality we expect from a true HDR product, which this is. I recommend this monitor, it performed well in our review over on Monitors Unboxed, so to learn more and upgrade yourself to an Ultra Gear OLED, check the links in the description below. There are also some more modest claims of DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 performance improvements, so I think it's about time we looked into them. Unfortunately, due to time, I was only able to focus on the A770, but I did go back and quickly test the A750, and we'll look at that more towards the end of the video. But the reason I was under the pump for this one was because I should be away enjoying some sunshine and kayak fishing for the first time in a few years, taking a bit of a quick holiday. But I promise a 40 plus game benchmark with the A750 and A770 will happen in the not too distant future. Anyway, let's just get on with it. Now, all GPUs have been tested at the official clock specification, so no factory overclocking. The CPU used is the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D with 32GB of dual rank dual channel DDR4 3200CL14 memory on the ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Extreme motherboard. In total, I've tested 12 games at 1080p and 1440p, so let's get into the data. First up is Rainbow Six Extraction, and this is a title that AMD made no specific performance claims for. And here we're seeing no real change in performance. The results with the new driver were improved by a mere 2%. And this was already quite a strong title for Intel's Arc GPU. So it's probably unsurprising that we see no real change here. However, Intel did claim a modest performance improvement in F1 2021, as well as the newer F1 22 version. However, here with F1 2021, we're seeing no real performance change. And again, this was already a very positive title for the A770 as it easily beat the 6650 XT and RTX 3060 at both 1080p and 1440p. Intel claimed one of their biggest DirectX 12 gains in Horizon Zero Dawn. And again, it's not exactly clear what the exact performance claim was as the graphs weren't labeled, typical marketing BS there, but they did claim a performance uplift all the same. Sadly though, in our testing, there were no gains to be had. Performance with the 4123 driver was the same as the original 3802 driver at both 1080p and 1440p. Watch Dogs Legion isn't a game that Intel claimed any performance gains for, but given that we did test with it previously, it makes sense to include it here. So based on that, you probably wouldn't be surprised to learn that at 1080p and 1440p, the data with the latest drivers matches what we found originally. Another game that we tested previously is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and again, no performance improvements were claimed for this title. The A770 was reasonably competitive with the 6650 XT and the RTX 3060 here, especially at 1440p, so that remains true with the latest driver. Now, Intel did claim a small performance improvement in Hitman 3. Again, not clear exactly how much of a percentage boost they were claiming, but in any case, we saw a mild 3% gain at 1080p, and then basically nothing at 1440p. Interestingly, we did see some strong performance gains in Far Cry 6, and this is a title that did see claimed performance gains from Intel, and quite interestingly, the gains that Intel claimed should have been quite similar in Hitman 3, where we saw no performance gains. Anyway, at 1080p, the A770 was 10% faster with the newer driver, allowing it to overtake the RTX 3060 by a 7% margin, though it did still trail the 6650 XT by a rather substantial 17% margin. Then at 1440p, we saw a 9% improvement, though this meant the A770 was still 11% slower than the 6650 XT. Intel also lists Cyberpunk 2077 as receiving a performance improvement, but sadly that wasn't seen in our testing, at least not beyond a frame. So the 1080p results are again disappointing as the A770 was slower than the RTX 3060, but at 1440p it comes in strong, dropping just 22% of the performance seen at 1080p, to beat even the 6650 XT. Dying Light 2 saw amongst the largest gains claimed by Intel for a DirectX 12 title, 
So here we are using DirectX 11 as we're using the high quality preset, which uses DirectX 11 by default, whereas DirectX 12 is reserved for ray tracing. And the game does recommend DirectX 11 when RT effects are disabled, as it will result in better performance. So at 1080p, we did see a 4% boost, though performance was much the same at 1440p. Halo Infinite wasn't mentioned by Intel, so no performance claims for this one. And as we see with our results, using the latest driver, it basically matched what we saw with the original release driver, so no performance change here. The game also has a number of known graphical issues with ARC GPUs, and Intel is yet to address all of those. Now, the second last game tested is Spider-Man Remastered, and this is a title that ran exceptionally well in our initial testing, despite that, Intel still claiming improved performance with the newer driver. I certainly wouldn't call these gains significant, at just 3%, but that's an improvement on an already very impressive result. And we also saw a 4% boost at 1440p, taking the A770 to 108fps, making it just 4% slower than the RTX 3060 Ti. Now, the only DirectX 9 game that was tested with previously was Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and the ARC results were truly awful. I'm very happy to report, though, that Intel has largely solved the performance-related issues. They're still not quite up to speed with AMD and NVIDIA, who are largely CPU-limited in this testing, but we're also seeing a massive 119% performance improvement to the average frame rate, so obviously very impressive gains there from Intel. We're also looking at a 120% boost at 1440p, and an insane 180% improvement to the 1% lows. So that is obviously a very great result, though I'm not willing to say the performance issues in CSGO are completely solved, as I did see quite a bit of stuttering when actually playing the game, but it is worlds better than it was. Okay, so after all of that, the A770 is now 9% faster on average in our testing, which is certainly an impressive uplift, but that also places it just 4% ahead of the RTX 3060 and still 8% slower than the 6650 XT. So it's great to see Intel making good gains in a relatively short period of time, but at 1080p, they really need to be beating the 6650 XT if they want to charge $350 US, which they currently are, and we'll look at that in a moment. Now, at 1440p, things do look up for the A770. Here, the newer driver again boosted performance in our testing by 8% on average, and that was enough to just edge out the 6650 XT, albeit by a mere 2% margin, but the A770 is now faster than the affordable Radeon GPU in our 12 game benchmark. As for what this new and improved performance does for the value of Intel's Arc A770, well, it has certainly helped as you'd expect, but ultimately it doesn't change the picture all that much, at least at 1080p. At $350 US, the A770 is still radically more expensive than the Radeon RX 6650 XT, costing almost 30% more per frame. The 1440p results though are far more competitive. Here the A770 was just 14% more costly per frame than the 6650 XT. And while the $50 discount that the Radeon GPU offers is still quite substantial, Intel's now in the ballpark and certainly offering worlds more value than Nvidia. Okay, so overall we didn't see much of an improvement across the majority of the games we feature in our day one GPU reviews, but those massive 120% gains in Counter-Strike Global Offensive We'll largely thank for a 9% boost overall. Basically, DirectX 9 performance has improved out of sight, and that was really it in our testing. That's great and all, but without a price cut from $350 US, the A770 is still a bit of a tough sell in my opinion. But about that, as I was wrapping this review up, I noticed that the A750 has dropped to just $250 US. Now, when I first reviewed the A750, it was priced at $290 US, and I said for it to compete with the likes of AMD 6650 XT, it'd need to cost $220 US. Well, we're not quite there, but adjusting for the improved performance, our $220 wish price could be increased to a $240 wish price. And that means we're now very close at $250 US. So that being the case, as I was wrapping this video up, and just about to leave for my fishing trip, I went back and ran the A750 through the 12 game gauntlet using the new driver, and here is the updated cost per frame. At 1080p, the A750 just edged out the RX 6600 as the best value GPU, reducing the cost per frame from the 6650 XT by 5%. So that's great. I'm not yet convinced it's quite enough to steer you away from the more tried and true option in the 6650 XT, but Intel's commitment to improving performance and compatibility now really does have me thinking about the A750 as a viable option.
Moreover, if you're playing at 1440p, the A750 does become the more obvious choice in my opinion, given that it's now offering a 14% saving per frame when compared to the 6650 XT. Really, $250 is a great price for the A750, and again, if I were in the market for an entry-level GPU, I would be seriously considering going with Intel here. Another potential advantage of the A750 over the 6650 XT is ray tracing support, and this is something we're yet to look at in detail for a few reasons. The largest of which being that we see RT support as fairly pointless on these more entry-level GPUs. After all, the A750 averaged 81 FPS at 1440p and 105 FPS at 1080p in our testing, so halving those frame rates, or probably worse, probably isn't something most of you are interested in. And in fact, we have polled that in the past, and it did seem as though most of you weren't interested in RT performance at this performance tier, or pretty much most performance tiers for that matter. But just to make sure that nothing's changed, I ran a poll on the Hard Box community tab just a week or so ago, and found that at RTX 3060 levels of performance, 85% of the 65,000 people who voted don't care about RT performance at all, characterizing it as too slow, and therefore you just wouldn't enable it. So for now, we're not gonna invest the time, but for a big head-to-head -head benchmark, ray tracer performance is something I'll touch on briefly in the future. For now, Intel does appear pretty well committed to making Arc work, at least that's what we've seen to date. Driver support for new games has been really good. So fingers crossed this level of dedication continues. And that, is going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a like. You can also subscribe for more content. As I said, hopefully in the not too distant future, big 50, 40, 50 game benchmarks of these GPUs compared to the relevant Radeon and GeForce GPUs will be coming up. And of course, we have a heap of other content planned. We also have Floatplane, Patreon, sign up to either one of those, you'll get access to some pretty cool stuff. We have an exclusive Discord server for members only where you can chat to Tim, myself, and the rest of our awesome community. Uh, we do a live stream as well for you guys at least once a month, behind the scenes content and Q&A. So a lot of cool stuff there. Check it out if you're interested, but if not, perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.